Hello everybody, Falcon197 here. This is the first of several tutorial videos I'm going to be putting uh, together for CryEngine 2 for how to do special features on multiplayer maps. After I release the early version of BASE, sort of the project report of that onto the CryDev forums, I received a request to give a tutorial for how to do some of the features that I included in the YouTube video there. So I'm going to be doing videos of the individual features such as the keypad doors, the uh, functional light system, the popping firing range targets, and a few other additional items. But today's uh, tutorial is going to be just over how to make keypad doors. Now you've noticed I've got CryEngine Editor open here and I've put together a small little zone to be able to demonstrate functional keypad doors for multiplayer. So obviously the first step is you're going to need to locate a door frame, a suitable place to put your door. Um, and then you're going to want to put a door entity into the world. We don't use animated doors or advanced doors uh, in any multiplayer maps because those entities are non-functional for the multiplayer. So your best bet is to stick with what we know works on some of the prefabs and other things. So we've got our door entity here. And you'll notice it's not, it does not have a, a model loaded yet. That's because we have to load one. So I'm going to go over here you'll excuse the scream, that's uh, an interrogation room right there. I'm going to go over here, use a pre-existing door that I've set up. I'm going to import its model by copying and pasting the model into the entity properties for model. In this case I'm using a panic door because I want a sliding door for this miniaturized detention center right here. We're just going to reposition it a little bit. You'll notice that uh, this door is smaller than the actual door frame. There is, actually, there is a way to fix that with the scaling option because any object can be scaled in CryEngine without losing its collision physics as long as you keep it to a one-tenth decimal point for all three fields. So in this case I'm going to increase it to a 1.1 size. Now if I was to just scale it width-wise or Z-wise or Y or just one of the three planes then it would probably distort. So we're not going to do that. I've just set the scale value to 1.1 here. So now that it's in place, it fits in the frame quite nicely. So we've brought our door in. Now we need to program how it's going to move. Now this is set uh, as a normal door to open on a rotating axis relative to, to the user. So I can go up to it in the game and I can hit it and it can open like that. But that's not the way we want it to open. We want it to slide. So I'm going to disable that by setting the rotation range to zero. The default is 90 so that it rotates 90 degrees on the z-axis as you can see here. I'm also going to uncheck the box for relative to user. That will ensure that uh, it won't open two different directions depending on which side of the door I'm standing on when I use it. So now that I've disabled the rotation mechanism I have to engage the slide mechanism. The default axis for the slide is already set to X, which is what we want. If at any time you need to uh, verify which axis is which, just engage the Select and Rotate option whenever you have your object selected, and it will tell you what the default planes are, or what the directions for those are. Sometimes the Select and Move feature can be misleading because those planes are set to a different direction than the actual planes. So, with that explained, now we're going to set the range for the axis for it to move along the x-axis and we want it to move minus 1.1 meters. The speed is fine, stop time is fine, but if we go into the world here we should see it does indeed slide, which is what we want. I'm going to move it back just a little bit. Okay, so we've got our door here. Now we can add a few other custom features. We can change the material up, we can change the sounds up, but I'm just going to uh, stick to the meat and potatoes of this and put a keypad next to it that's going to control it. So we're going to bring in another door entity to the world and this time instead of uh, using a door object like this as the model, we're going to use a keypad. So there's a couple ways to get this. I already have a pre-existing one that I could use but I'm going to show you guys where I got this from. If you go to the brush library and type in keypad in the filter, the only thing it should give you is the panic door keypad which is what we want. So I'm going to select the model under geometry. I'm going to copy it. I can delete it at this point by the way. But I'm going to bring it over, select under model for the door, paste it in, boom, there it is. 
So we've replaced that. Now I'm going to put it into position on the little space I set up for it here. Kind of rotate it into place there. Put it right just so. All right, now the same thing applies to this. It, it's a door, so it has default values. And if I was to walk up to it and use it, it would just rotate and it would do absolutely nothing. So we're going to set the range on the rotation once again to zero so that it won't turn. And we're going to disable the relative to user function. All right, now, doors cannot be uh, used as control mechanisms for other doors or other objects in the world unless they themselves move. Let me say that again. If you make a door a switch and it doesn't move, it won't switch whatever you want it to switch. So we have to make this door move ever so slightly. And we can do that by programming it to slide for one ten thousandth of a meter. If I go under the range for slide, I can just set it to 0 0.0001. And if I do that, when I go up to it in the world, you'll see I'm using it, but it's not visibly moving. If you look very closely, you can see it's moving maybe a pixel bit. But to the casual user who just walks up to it and uses the keypad, or what they think is a keypad, they won't notice that they're actually using a door because it's not moving. But it will still control something. All right, now, we've got our door, we've got our keypad. Now we need to link the two together so that one controls the other. And how I'm going to do that is I'm going to click Create under the Flow Graph field farther down on the keypad list. So let's see, I've got a bunch of flow graphs already set up, as you can see. But now that we've got our flow graph tool, we're going to uh, import both entities into the flow graph. Now, I've already got my keypad selected, as you can see. So I'm going to right-click into here and click Add Selected Entity. That will put the door entity into my flow graph. Right, and then I'm going to select the other door that I want this switch to control. I'm going to bring it in as well. Now, something worth noting here is you can't save a flow graph. You just go open the flow graph tool separately and try creating a new graph and just saving it. For some reason, the original CryEngine is uh, not very cooperative with saving flow graphs. And when I was first experimenting with this uh, a year and a half ago, I found that I was constantly losing my flow graphs because instead of going to the object that I wanted to be the graph entity for the flow graph and just clicking create, I was trying to make it the other way and it wasn't working, but enough on that. So we've got both of our entities in the graph. Now we need to link them together. And since our control mechanism is the graph entity, it will, be, it will act as the switch. What I'm going to do is I'm going to link the open and the close features together. This ensures that when I go and use this door that is the keypad, whenever I open it, this other door will open. Whenever I close it, the door will close. Pretty straightforward. And as you can see, there it is. All right, now, there's one or two other things that are important to do before we can call this finished. Since I've linked these two together, one does control the other, but both of them still act as independent entities. And what I mean by that is, if I want to, I can go, still go up to the store and I can use it separately without punching the keypad. That kind of defeats the purpose of having a keypad in the first place. But there's a way to fix that. So I select the door that is controlled by the keypad, and I set its use distance to zero. This only removes the usable range which I can activate the door from. It does not disable the door's functionality. So, see, I go up here and the use function is gone. I hit my use key, it doesn't do anything. But, lo and behold, I go over and I punch the flow graft door entity, that's the keypad, and it still opens my door, like so. But, uh, with that pretty well completed, I'm going to cut this tutorial here, and I will be back in the next tutorial to talk about the lighting system. And I may also do a future tutorial on the alarm system I showed as an alternate way to put this flow graph to use. Alright, well thanks for watching. I'll look forward to posting this video and making others. Feel free to subscribe, it would be appreciated.